Hey Mackenzie. How are you? I'm doing good. How's your day going so far? Today has been a busy day, just yes. kind of like every other day, but um, I'm in a really good mood today. So oh, it's that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Keeping the mind positive, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, that's amazing. You had a video shoot today or a videography? Ah, today, yes, I had a quick meeting this morning with a wonderful videographer in the city, Eugenio. Uh, we just finished up a project for a group of ladies that we're just kind of um, tying up loose ends on with. And so that project is done and it'll be on to the next soon, I hope. How many projects do you have going on? You're always doing something. You know what? I am. And, um, but my life has always been like that. And I found uh, the busier I am, the um, more passionate I am about everything that I do. So when I don't have a lot going on, I tend to get a little bit sluggish and lazy. But when I have a whole bunch of stuff on my plate, I'm energized and excited about each and everything. So I kind of like it that way, even though I'm exhausted. I uh, I like it like that. It keeps life interesting. It keeps me on my toes. So. Absolutely. And then you go go to bed and you feel fulfilled. You've accomplished something. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Do you oftentimes say no to things? I do. I've learned how to say no over the years mm -hmm. because I think when you are um, new in a certain industry or just kind of starting a different career or entering a new world you'll say yes to everything and with time you start to really sit back and think about okay is this something i actually believe in is this something that i want to work with and and then you you stand up for yourself and and you make sure you're doing things that have meaning for you so no that's awesome you've had a an interesting year um just like many of us but this year has been extremely tough i'm guessing for yourself right it has, yes. I, uh, I, I thought that I had learned several lessons up to this year and felt wiser than usual, um, than normal. And then I was definitely hit with just a whirlwind of, of new heaviness um, that I've had to navigate through for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so it's been an interesting year, and I think out of any part in my life, this has been the time that I've learned the most about myself and and my inner strength. I lost my mother, who um, was my rock, so it's been interesting to try and go through each day and experience the things that you do without having your person to talk to. Mm -hmm but you find ways and you learn that there really are angels in human form that are there for you and there to help guide you through. And I have been so lucky when it comes to that. So. Yeah, I lost my mom two years ago in August and uh, I know what you mean. I mean, I have a picture of her right here, another one right there. You know, they are our rock and um, best friend, person you relied on. So it's almost like, how do you, how did you find the strength within yourself or where did you find it? Because, I mean, even for myself, I was distraught. I mean, who wouldn't be? It's true. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, you go, there are all those signs of grief, of anger and of being upset. And, and I don't know if they ever come in order. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's, you know, um, because I loved that woman more than I ever thought was humanly possible to love someone. Um, knowing that she is free and that she no longer has to wake up every day and struggle um, is what gives me peace. And knowing that her and I lived for one another and that there was never an opportunity lost to be there for each other and to help one another through the tough times and to say, I love you. I mean, we spoke on the phone five times a day and texted in between that. Um, so I think there's so much peace that comes from truly loving someone with all of your heart and soul and never missing an opportunity to show them that. And also knowing that they are free 
and and that you now depending upon your beliefs you there you have someone there to look to look over you and look after you in a different way yeah. um and her and i always said we'll see each other again it just is in a different place at a different time so and in a different there. form yeah yeah definitely. is there a moment throughout since she's been gone now physically in this world that you just say sometimes god mom i just wish you were here for this or i wish you saw this because you're doing so many great things right and you're like oh no mom you should be here for this and i've done that many times it's like, oh, i just wish you were here to see some of the things um and it doesn't need to be oh i got a new job or something like that it's more your kid is growing your son or daughter is growing they're getting stronger and yeah. uh I mean, tomorrow will be one year for me being sober, so not drinking, right? Thank you. So in my whole adult life, I would drink and I mean, just like most people, I didn't realize it was a problem for myself. And I'm like, I wish you were here to see this because you'd always tell me, Zach, stop drinking, slow down. And Mom, look, I did it. But you know, she's up there watching. So there's also strength we find from them, our angels, don't we? We do. Yes. And, and even though she's not here, she is so unbelievably proud of you you know she she's she's still watching you and yeah. is so proud and and it's true i um i still talk to her uh all the time and i never thought of this but she, she when i do go to sleep at night a lot of the times i'll dream of her and it's the nicest thing and i never ever thought of that prior to her passing but uh you get to experience that person again and every time i see her she's so happy and um, it's, it's just such a lovely thing. I have never thought of it, but it's the best night when mm. I see her. So, And you know, it's sometimes really nice to see is that our angels are at peace from the worldly problems that we see going on. And it almost sounds like they left us and they're like, all right, see you guys. We're having fun up there. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. enjoy, enjoy all the chaos in the world. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. No. I I definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Is there is there is it every day you think of your mom in certain things? Yeah, every single day. Um she was my one of my friends said it to me. She said she, she was your soulmate. And so life without that person, you think of them all of the time, all of the time. Um but she because of who she was, um I, I am able to live my life in a way that represents her. I teach um, a lot of girls and some young boys ballet. And so I, any love that I was going to give to her, and I still give to her, I share it with them because she was so wonderful to me that I have the opportunity to, to give it to all of my almost I don't know, 150 kids a week. Maybe. Oh my goodness. There's a lot. Maybe that's, maybe that, I don't know, close to maybe a hundred, but, um, so yeah, I get to oh, share that. Beautiful. What were, what were some of the traits that you got from your mom that now you have within you that you apply now uh, that you maybe never knew you had at the time? Yeah. Um, definitely her empathy mm -hmm. and her ability to, to kind of look in a room and sort out who was the person that needed love the most mm -hmm. and give it to them and to always celebrate the underdog in life. And to, if someone is in need to do everything you possibly can to help them. Um, it's, that's one of the reasons why I started off, started up my nonprofit organization uh, was because of her was some, um, she, she was the most generous loving human being ever and so i wanted to make sure i continued that on because it's so nice when you can help people we're, we're all supposed to help one another so if you're given an opportunity to do that it's nice mm -hmm. to take it yeah. so she she and her and my dad are two of the most generous people ever oh. um so definitely uh, i think Empathy. some of those yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you re realized through the pandemic, though, that people are fragile? We really are not as strong as we think we are or were. Everyone struggles and everyone is nervous. We're all in the, I mean, the uncertainty together. We've heard things like that. How was it for you 
maneuvering through the pandemic and teaching ballet and obviously not being physically there with the kids. Was that tough on you and for the children? You know, it, it certainly was. It was hard to keep everybody's interest just simply because when you're in a studio and the teacher's there, you are live, you're in action. Um, but fortunately, my, my students were awesome throughout it all. And um, it, was just, it was actually a good challenge for us to find creative ways to make sure they were still getting an education, they were safe, they were still growing as dancers. Um, I actually found it to be a fun challenge. And I, I did take an opportunity to make sure that we talked a lot more than just Miss McKenzie giving ballet exercises at the bar. We would talk and just discuss how each person was actually doing. Um, so you become closer to your students when you're when you're in that sort of a circumstance. Mm -hmm. So it was actually really, it was nice That's for us. That's super cool. Was the student's morale defeated or did you see it uplifted as um, they would come there, they would forget the worldly problems? Because I couldn't imagine being a kid right now. Could you? No, no, definitely not. Right. You know, <laughs> I had to, sometimes being a teacher, it's, it takes a lot of energy, but you have to remember that sometimes that 45 minutes a week is one of, is one of the few outs that a child may get, you know, we've got school, we've got this, that, and the other. Um, so for them, I think it was, it was a really nice out and, and that familiarity of having their crazy teacher and um, the comfort and therapy of dance, I think was a really good thing for them, actually. You know, we missed out on some competitions mm -hmm. and a recital, um, but now it's even more of a big deal and everyone is really excited for this year and, and whatnot. That's so it wonderful, was yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you seeing kids go from ballet to acting to singing in that format or is there ever a way that people stagger it and layer their skill set? What was it for you? What was your journey? Because you do it. You're like a triple threat or quadruple threat here. I, uh, I, um, I started off doing all forms of dance and was fortunate enough to live in a city where they have still have an excellent theater company. Um, and so I did the singing, dancing, acting, and then I moved away um, when I was 12. To Were you in Calgary? Was this in Calgary? The... Uh, no, this was in Saskatchewan. Okay. And then I moved to Winnipeg in the United States mm -hmm. um, to train professionally. And so I focused only on ballet, mm -hmm. which anyone will say to you that ballet is of the utmost importance. It really does give you that strong foundational technique. Um, and then I came back and, and took a break for a while. I had some health issues that I had to deal with mm -hmm. that were pretty hard um, and got back into it. And now I, I kind of do it all. And it's coming from a place of joy. It's amazing how when you let something go and then you come back to it, especially as you know a thirty-something-year-old woman. Um, now it's I enjoy it more, and the nerves aren't there. Um, but I'm definitely enjoying acting and singing almost as much, if not more, than dance. So it'll be nice to kind of see where that that takes me. And I think it was over the summer you were in a theater somewhere weren't you yeah yeah i yeah. kept seeing that going on yeah, that was really cool it, you know what it was a gift from the heavens above because i needed to take some time away from calgary there had been a lot that happened and i saw the audition notice and it was in my hometown and so i got the part i went back to saskatchewan mm -hmm. i was able to be there with my mother the whole time wow. and then I did the show and the cast and crew of that show, we became like family. And I have to say that saved me for the whole summer and just to be able to permanently be there with family um, and perform on that stage again was, um, it, it was, it, it, everything worked out magically. Really. Right. Are you from Regina originally or I'm Prince Virginia? Albert? Oh, yeah. Prince Albert. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> everyone laughs um yeah, it's true yeah when you wow what am it's almost like the dots were connected when you look back that you were supposed to be there that's where you're supposed to be in your life nowhere else huh 
it was it was um i i was there i slept in the same bed as her in the hospital and held her hand and then had the most incredible people in the show there immediately after and when you're acting or dancing you are you're you're playing someone else yeah. so to be able to not be mckenzie for a couple of hours every day and and be this you know flirtatious uh, mm -hmm. event yeah. um it was it was a, a very therapeutic escape for for the time that i was doing it was it tough mentally to switch into another role when deep down there's, I don't know what you felt, but for me, it was anxiety. Um, yes. All the feelings, right? Your world's going to shatter. Yes. I. How, how did you switch from that role to that role and feel, I'm okay to do this? It's tough. It is. And fortunately, um, for that period of time, I was in so much shock mm -hmm. that that's what got me through was the shock of, of it all, it ha didn't hit me until I came back to Calgary and was alone that it really started to hit. But I was constantly surrounded by the most mm -hmm. loving people um, and it just hadn't hit me yet, so. Wow, and how beautiful is it that you had a family there that was one big hug that you needed, that support system, yeah. Yeah, yeah. theater people, I, I mean, <laughs> the, anyone who has performed at a musical or, or done anything like that, it's the most accepting group of people that that's around. So mm -hmm. and authentic. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. You can't front anything. It's you are who you are, and you got to be vulnerable, and you got to learn and keep growing. Yeah, you do. Yes. So now you've got this nonprofit out there. I've seen that you've raised already a thousand dollars. Yes. That was what's that, that all about? So that was the first kick at the can. Yep. And that this is going to be a huge learning experience for myself. Um, and I've come to the realization that I need to ask people for advice and guidance because there's a lot more involved with it than I thought there was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did, we raised a thousand dollars for the Calgary emergency or women's emergency shelter, um, which was wonderful. And I, I really enjoyed giving my students the opportunity to actually perform behind camera for the first time, because most of them hadn't done that before. So I thought, okay, I'm going to create this experience for them. And we're going to raise money for some very brave individuals in the city and just do the best that that we can. Mm -hmm. So we, we did that. Um, and in the spring, obviously in honor of my mother, we will be doing something for the Canadian Cancer Society. Um, and I just, I haven't decided exactly what yet uh, because I've, kind of been like a chicken with its head cut off running around the city, but it will come to me and um, it's, I'm going to do everything in my power to make it the most beautiful thing that I can. Do you, do you have siblings in the industry as well or siblings in the same world as you're in? I don't, I have two sisters and two yeah. brothers. I'm 36 and they're much, well, okay, I shouldn't say that because they'll listen to this. <laughs> the they're older than I am older, yeah. um, and uh, they're in Prince Albert and they're not in this okay. industry. No, I was kind of the odd one out, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're very supportive. Of oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of say, what is she doing now? You know, yeah. that crazy girl. But, <laughs> but. What made you come to Calgary or what made you come back to Calgary after St. Albert? I mean, you had the theater people there, sure. You had family there. You would think that you'd want to stay there and not come back, especially so soon. I mean, 2021 is not even over and you've dealt with a lot. Absolutely. I um, had signed a my contracts with the two studios that I okay. teach at in Calgary. Yes. And I genuinely, uh, I genuinely love my kids. Um, and I knew that by doing that, that they would bring me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted, I wanted to get back to that and just kind of be in my world again and be there for them. We have a few things to do this year, um, Youth American Grand Prix and a few competitions in the city. Um, so I, I wanted to be there for them. No, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have, my students have strange, 
they've saved me. They've been yeah. such um, a source of joy mm -hmm. uh, these past couple of years. So Angels in human form, right? They are. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, that's awesome. Now, I guess, what do we have for 2022? Anything exciting? Any things that we should look out for? Because it's... <laughs> yes. Well, I am... For the first time coaching for Youth American Grand Prix. So I will be wow. flying down to Denver um, with Gay Lynn. She runs Hattori Williamson. Uh, so we will be taking some lovely students to compete in that competition. Mm. I will be taking my students from Dexterity Dance Studio. McKenna Sindecki owns that studio. Um, and we'll be doing some fun projects around the city. I am fingers crossed, very excited and hopeful for a potential show this summer in Saskatchewan that I would like to audition for. It's actually, if they do it, I'm not sure how much <laughs> I can say, it is uh, my dream show uh, to do. So is it? hopefully okay. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll be finishing up my teaching diploma from the Royal Academy of Dance in London. Is that, the, uh, that's not the Herod Conservatory because you, you also have something from there, don't you? Yeah, I graduated from there um, as a student in florida several years ago mm -hmm. um so yes and i i hope to myself actually go to new york for a while and do some training just just to kind of get in that new york groove again for for my I own day. is broadway yeah. different like something to be a part of and just see there is it out yeah. of this world compared to anywhere else it's new york i mean <laughs> it's hard it's hard to beat that london is pretty i would say it's 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 like this for sure uh but new york is new york mm -hmm. so yeah. favorite play or favorite show you've watched chicago Ooh, yeah, yeah. i watched wicked in london that was pretty cool yeah. oh yeah for sure yeah <laughs> they're fun do you go to shows here in calgary as well or operas you know i so i usually i teach every night of the mm. week um, so it's really hard for me to get to shows. I miss Swan Lake, which is one of my favorite ballets, but, um, I have a couple of friends actually that are jazz singers and jazz musicians. So I go and support nice. them quite a bit, but I haven't, I haven't been to any shows mm -hmm, here. Sure. So if someone wants to, I guess, help, help be a part of what you're doing, your movement, uh, how can they do so here, Mackenzie? Oh, they can reach out to me at any point in time through Instagram. It, that's usually mm -hmm. best. Uh, I love talking to people. I love hearing their stories um, because everybody has a story. And, and I feel after what we've been through the last couple of years that people do, they, they want to reach out and help more. Mm -hmm. So anyone can reach me at any time. Oh, that's amazing. As soon as I'm done teaching. I, I love it. I love it. As long as I'm much. Was yeah. there a reason you picked? The women's shelter, which is fantastic, by the way. But was there a reason you picked that specific cause? Yes, there, there definitely, there, there were several reasons because for me choosing that, um, the more women that I speak to, um, the more damage I see done. And um, myself as well. So I, I believe that and because i've received so much support myself through mm -hmm. friends and other women um i think it's important that we help one another i just heard way too many stories and i thought this is exactly what i'm going to start off with because even though you know we we didn't raise fifty thousand dollars or anything every little bit helps every little and, bit adds up yeah yeah mm -hmm. and i just feel i heard a lot of stories about during the pandemic with yeah. everyone being home how bad it it got and well, i thought this is where i need to focus you know they were saying is some stats i had seen domestic violence had increased in the homes because people didn't know where to go i mean you're going to move out to where so you're working from home your kids are home your husband's home and it was just chaos trauma grief you know i think uh one industry that definitely did pick up through all this was the divorce lawyers right so yes definitely yeah mm -hmm. and we, i think there was an increase in uh women going into shelters but i think there's also a stigma around that as well isn't there yes yeah. definitely. even though definitely. it is a safe place to go if you're not safe right and and we 
we should all be able to feel safe and we should all be able to get a chance at a life that is so much more free, you know? So mm -hmm. if, if a person can help out in any way, shape or form that, that could change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And, and my mother always saved me. And, um, I just know that the value that comes from that is it's just outstanding, really empowering. And one of the most important yeah. things I think our parents did or our moms did for us was believe in us. Yes. Absolutely. And that hope yeah. for a better life, a better future, a better us. Yes. Do you find in your day to day tasks now you're you're seeing a little bit of your mom in you? All the time. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. All yeah. the time. No, that's yeah. Awesome. I I have had a few people say, Oh, you really look you look like her and mm -hmm. you're very light and that is the that's the best yeah. compliment I could ever receive in my life. So um yes, often. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank yeah. you for today, Mackenzie. I do appreciate your time and um, we'll have to do one of these again soon. This is great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was an honor and I'm very proud of you. That's amazing. A year is a long time mm -hmm. and you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you again. We'll chat yeah. later.